This week's episode of Star Wars Rebels, Through Imperial Eyes, probably gives us my favorite representation of Grand Admiral Thrawn so far in this series. Believing Callus's secret identity as Fulcrum is in danger of being discovered, Ezra, Chopper, and AP-5 attempt to rescue him. The episode was a thrilling game of cat and mouse between Thrawn and Callus that I think will have major implications in the remaining episodes this season. I am really into Callus as a character right now. I've said before I'm a sucker for characters that switch sides. Good guys going bad or bad guys going good. I always think interesting stories come out of that conflict. And Callus's early scene with Ezra shows how stressed out the guy is. But this entire episode, he holds it together, and he makes some very smooth and smart choices. He's summoned a Grand Admiral Thrawn's ship, which is called by name the Chimera. They've already confirmed that outside of the show, I think, but it's nice to actually hear the Legends reference out loud. Thrawn has brought in Wolf Yularen to help discover the identity of the Rebel Spy, and it's great to have him back. In their search for the spy, it seems they're interviewing just about everyone that has ever had contact with the Ghost crew, like Captain Brunson from the episode Ghosts of Geonosis, or Brom Titus, who was most recently in Steps into Shadow. Callus acts quickly and begins framing Lieutenant List, who previously appeared in the Season 2 episode A Princess on Lothal. I think these characters popping up are meant to show us something very specific. The three officers we see in the hallway and List have all been beaten by the crew of the Ghost in the past. I think we're meant to read between the lines and see that Thrawn is really studying his enemy. I don't think all of these people are under suspicion of being Fulcrum. Instead, I think Thrawn is studying the tactics used by the Rebels so he can destroy them. Lieutenant List is stationed on Lothal, and the planet's connection with the Ghost crew makes him the perfect target for Callus to frame, which he does by using their code cylinders. I get asked about those all the time, and I even talked about them in yesterday's Q&A. It would appear I was wrong in how they actually function, because we've never seen it before, but I thought they just acted as, like, wireless scanners. Maybe they still do, but in this episode we actually see them plugged into terminals. Callus very effectively, although somewhat obviously, sets List up as the traitor. Feeling confident, he decides not to escape with Ezra and the others, claiming he can do more good here. Which is exactly what Sabine said last episode. Although, I'm afraid this decision is going to have some dire consequences this time. Wolf Yularen notes to Thrawn how quickly and conveniently everything came together, and it's in this scene that I realized Yularen looks like, at least in this episode, he's meant to fill the role of Captain Pelion from Legends. Pelion was the Dr. Watson to Thrawn's Sherlock Holmes an intelligent and noble career military man who's there to listen to Thrawn be a genius. And that's exactly what happens here. It's classic Legends Thrawn. He finds a thread and he pulls on it until he learns something greater. In this case, it's the artwork on Ezra's helmet that he recognizes as Sabine's, which makes it logical that Callus should have recognized Ezra and that he kept that information to himself, outing him as the spy. Deductions from artwork. I loved it, and I wish we got more of this from Thrawn throughout the entire season. In fact, there were some other great Legends connections to the Legends version of Thrawn that I geeked out over. The override code Thrawn gives for his security droids is Ruck, which is the name of his Nogri bodyguard in the original Thrawn trilogy. The lizard-like artwork on his wall was meant to represent the Salamiri, a creature that was an important part of his plot in the books. Also, his droids and officers and stormtroopers bear a specific symbol. I'm wondering if it's Chiss in origin, maybe even part of the Chiss Ascendancy, which I think could be brought back into the canon in his book this April. There were other Easter eggs in his office too, like what could be Gree's clone trooper helmet, and this statue of an Abednado, a species introduced in The Force Awakens. All of these Legends connections are awesome, but they also have me a little worried for the future. I think Thrawn's attack on Adalon is going to play out very similarly to his Legends attacks on Coruscant and Bilbringi. In the Battle of Bilbringi, Thrawn is assassinated by Ruck, the bodyguard I mentioned before. Callus could be in a position to fill in for Ruck now, but if Thrawn allows that to happen, knowing that Callus is Fulcrum, I will be very disappointed. I'm also just not ready for Thrawn to die. Despite how great he was in this episode, I just don't feel like he's done enough to live up to his Legends counterpart. 
I think it's possible that my opinion could change between now and the finale if he continues to act exactly like he did in this episode for the rest of the season, but it's going to be close. But if we're just talking about this episode by itself, I thought it was fantastic. My heart was pounding for Callus. The tension was high. I don't feel like anyone made any blatantly stupid decisions. Callus did the best he could given the circumstances, and the Rebels basically forced him to act quickly, and he was found out because of evidence left by Ezra and not anything he did. I'm very satisfied with how all of this played out. Before wrapping up, I have a couple of stray observations. Ezra tries to take back Hera's Kalikori, which is a very nice moment of continuity and a show of loyalty by Ezra. Callus and Ezra remove Adalon from Thrawn's list of possible rebel planets, which could be the very thing that gives the base away. And finally, the episode starts with something incredibly rare in the Star Wars universe, plumbing. Seriously, how many times can you remember seeing a faucet or a toilet or something like that in all of Star Wars? There's a deleted scene from Attack of the Clones and a bathroom in Dark Forces, but all in all, it's a very rare sight. What did you guys think of Through Imperial Eyes? Did you like the episode as much as I did? What do you think will happen to Callus in the future? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see the rest of my Rebels reviews, you can see them in this playlist here. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with new Star Wars lore and news videos every single day, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.